Hey, 42 here. We've only been able to record sound for just over 150 years, but in that time, we have done some amazing things with sound and captured some amazing historical events. Here's a rundown of some of the creepiest and most chilling sounds ever recorded. Sound recording was invented in 1857 by Edward Leon Scott de Martinville when he created the phonautograph. It was used to create the first ever sound recording, which is believed to be the inventor himself singing Eau Claire de la Lune in 1860. By today's audio standards, it's a very creepy sounding recording, and being over 154 years old is an imperative piece of history. In the early 1960s, a space race was on between the United States and the Soviet Union. The competition between the two nations was fierce, and whoever successfully made it into space first would forever have bragging rights. The American tragedies that ensued as a result of their attempts to reach space are well known. But the Soviet Union's not so much. At that time, many amateur radio enthusiasts were building homebrew radio equipment at their homes that allowed them to listen into space communication frequencies used by the two nations during their voyages. Two brothers in Turin, Italy, named Achille and Giovanni Giudica Cordiglia, were way ahead of most people in this field with their radio and telecommunications equipment. They were able to tune in to all the Soviet Union's space frequencies and record their transmissions. In May of 1961, the two brothers picked up a transmission from a Soviet space frequency that chilled them to the very core. It was the voice of a female clearly in distress. This is a short clip of the actual recording made by the brothers. The woman is speaking in Russian, but when translated, she is saying, I feel hot, I can see a flame. Am I going to crash? Yes, yes, I will re-enter. And then the transmission cuts out. Three days after the recording was made, the official Soviet news agency TASS announced a failed re-entry of a satellite the size of a bus. However, the launch had not been previously announced and the satellite was never mentioned to anyone. To this day, the Soviet Union has never acknowledged the alleged incident and the identity of the woman still remains completely unknown. At number 3 is a 1922 recording made by Thomas Edison of Harry E. Humphrey. Edison recorded it on his own invention, the phonograph, which was the very first audio player. The idea was to sell the recording to owners of Edison's phonograph so that they could play it to their children and experience Christmas joy. But it had the opposite effect. In fact, it's just about the most terrifying Christmas message you will ever hear. Here's a short clip from the original recording. Hello, little folks. Do you know who I am? You've heard of me often. Some say I'm a sham. <laughs> but most of you know that cannot be true. For every Christmas you see what I do. And now, you not only know just what I do, but you hear my old voice as I'm speaking to you. Who is it, you say? Hush, close all the doors and I'll tell you a secret. I'm old Santa Claus. <laughs> The laugh alone is enough to put kids off Father Christmas forever. <laughs> Saturn is a source of intense radio emissions. In 2002, when the Cassini spacecraft did a flyby of Saturn, it recorded these strange radio emissions emanating from Saturn. If you listen closely, you can hear what appears to be an alien voice. <laughs> It 
It's very hard to make out any words, yet some people believe they have deciphered the message as this. You people are urged to drop the earthly impulse. What do you think? Is it aliens or just gargled space static? Operation Wondering Soul was an attempt by the US military during the Vietnamese War to scare the opposition into submission by playing terrifying sounds through the jungle in the dead of night. It is the Vietnamese belief that the dead must be buried in their homeland or their soul will wander aimlessly in pain and suffering. Therefore, when they heard the following sound echoing out the depths of the dense jungle, they would have certainly felt a great sense of turmoil and dread. The US militants would often broadcast a sound from loudspeaker systems aboard helicopters. During the Cold War for over 30 years, the shortwave radio spectrum was used by the world's intelligence agencies to transmit secret messages to their spies who were stationed in enemy countries. These transmissions were called number stations and were completely anonymous one-way radio transmissions across shortwave radio that could be picked up and listened to by anyone using only very basic radio equipment. Number stations were broadcast 24 hours a day on very rigid schedules by various European countries. The broadcast were nothing more than a female or male voice repeating a series of numbers and letters. The key feature of these broadcasts is that the coded messages they contained are completely unbreakable and can only be understood by the select few whom are supposed to receive the messages. Despite many attempts, nobody apart from the intended recipients has ever been able to decode a number station message. This is a recording of a British number station transmission. And this is a German station, known by radio enthusiasts as the Swedish Rhapsody. It uniquely features a really creepy little girl. There's a particularly bizarre number station called the Backwards Music Station, because some believe it sounds like music being played backwards. The signal is believed to be transmitted from both the US and UK. The difference between this number station and most others is that it never plays any voice messages, just endless, hellish noises. <laughs> One would think that number stations would have died out at the end of the Cold War around 1991, but they are still widely used by intelligence agencies today to transmit messages to spies because shortwave radio still remains a very reliable means of communication. So if you tune into the right frequency at the right time, you may be able to hear a live broadcast of a real number station. If your image of space is a vast, silent nothingness dotted with weird looking rocks, you would be half wrong. Space is silent to the human ear, but with the right equipment you can pick up and record vibrations in space. This is exactly what happened when NASA's Voyager spacecraft recorded Jupiter's atmosphere. This is the sound it picked up.
It's incredibly eerie to think that such a sound can be made by a planet. It sounds more like an alien tractor beam than a big ball of gas. The sound is actually a result of the complex interactions of charged electromagnetic particles and the planet's solar wind and magnetosphere. And you thought playing an instrument was complicated. Speaking of space, not all space noises come from planets. In 1977, the Big Ear radio telescope at the Ohio State University picked up a narrowband radio signal from outer space that sounded like this. It was named the WOW signal because the man who first spotted it on the logs circled it in red pen and wrote WOW beside it. But the peculiar thing about the WOW signal is that it came from a location in outer space that contains no planets or galaxies, a seemingly empty area of space. So how could a signal be transmitted from an area of complete nothingness? Unless it wasn't actually empty. Many people believe the signal came from an alien spacecraft traveling through the vast emptiness of outer space. But to this day, science still can't explain where the signal originated from. Thanks for the view, subscribe for more 42.